Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer, and today we're taking a look and installing the DrawTight Class 1 trailer hitch receiver on a 2015 Toyota Prius. Now this is what your hitch is going to look like when it's installed on your Prius, and it is an exposed cross tube, meaning you can see the majority of the hitch uh, below the fascia, but really this car is fairly low, so unless you're directly behind it, you're really not going to see much except for the receiver tube opening and the safety chain loops. Now this one being an inch and a quarter means that you are going to be a little bit limited when it comes to bike racks, cargo carriers, or ball mounts. Um, because it is a class one, uh, that's kind of the nature of it. I have one on my own vehicle and it hasn't stopped me from putting cargo carriers or bike racks, so don't let that deter you as there's not really a whole lot of other options for this vehicle. Now, all of your accessories are gonna stay in place with a half inch pin and clip. Uh, it does not come with a hitch, but a lot of times when you pick up your accessories, they'll have one included. So that's something to look for. And if you're getting secondhand stuff and you need to pick up a separate pin and clip, I recommend picking up a locking one. And we have plenty of options available here at eTrailer. And that way, if you leave your accessories on the back of the vehicle and you're you know, leaving your vehicle unattended, you don't have to worry about someone walking by and taking those accessories. Now, if you do plan on pulling a small trailer, you have safety chain loops that are nice and easy to get to. So a standard S hook, no problem. Even a larger clevis style will also go on there with ease. And speaking of towing, you are gonna to want to adhere to the weight capacities of the hitch. And being a class one, that means a gross trailer weight rating of 2,000 pounds. And that's gonna be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded up. So you're not gonna be do heavy hauling with this by any means, but if a small utility trailer or jet skis or something along those lines that should be able to handle it pretty well. Now speaking of uh, capacities you also want to adhere to your tongue weight rating and that's going to be 200 pounds on this which is going to be the downward pressure that's put on the inside of the receiver tube opening. So picture a cargo carrier a bike rack something that's going to weigh down on that you're going to want to stay under 200 pounds. So when loading those accessories take into account the weight of the accessories plus whatever you're loading onto it that way you're not overloading it. Now back to towing, you do want to check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's capable of towing before just hooking up and uh, towing that trailer down the road. Now from the center of the hitch pin to the furthest point of the fascia, it's pretty well in line with it. There's maybe about an inch and that comes into play when picking up folding accessories. Some cargo carriers and bike racks in a stowed position will fold up and I really don't worry too much about this making contact with the fascia, so you're looking good there. Something to consider though, uh, it may block your rear view camera and also may hinder you from opening the hitch all the way in that stowed position, um, but you won't make any contact with your fascia from what I could see. Now as far as ground clearance goes, this one comes in from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground at 12 inches, and that's important if you are choosing a ball mount to determine if you need a rise or a drop, uh, so measure the couple of your trailer and then based off of that 12 inches determine that height uh, whether it be a you know raise or a drop and you can pick up that ball mount here at e-trailer to make sure that it's nice and even but also keep in mind when you have those loaded suspended accessories like your cargo carriage and bike racks as you go up an incline those are extending past the vehicle they're going to want to tilt towards the ground faster than the vehicle so if you're going up a steep incline maybe a large speed bump something along those lines just keep that in mind when you have those accessories loaded up now as far as installation goes, it's not too terribly difficult. If you don't have an underbody panel on yours, it's going to be a little bit easier. Uh, you are going to be removing a factory tow hook because it uses the bolts where you're going to be bolting up your new hardware for your hitch. And with the underbody panel, you do kind of have to finagle that through, um, which can get a little bit tricky, but it's not terribly hard to do. The exhaust, you do want to lower that down by removing some of the isolators. And there's a bracket where one of the exhaust hangers is bolted up into the frame as well where we're gonna to need to remove that hardware. But I'm gonna walk you through all the steps. So let's go ahead, take a look at that and get your hitch installed. At a beginner installation, you're gonna to wanna to check underneath your Prius to see if you have this plastic underbody panel. And if you do, no big deal. There's just gonna be a series of plastic push pins that we're gonna to remove to just kinda of draw this down. We're not gonna completely remove it. And then there's also this center uh, plastic kind of button, I guess you call it. This one, you just put a, a flat head. You might need a wider flat head to get this, but that will just kinda of unscrew here. Once you kinda of get it loose, you can get this with your fingers normally. Now, since the threads are plastic, it does kind of help to put a little bit of pressure as you're drawing this down. Otherwise, it kind of just slides back on the stud. And we may need to pop these out first to kind of get a little bit more leverage. So these are pretty easy. There's four slots. You can choose any of them. 
And with a flat head or a trim panel tool like I'm using here, just kind of pry up that center portion. And sometimes the Toyota ones are pretty tough sometimes, but uh, once you get that center part out, the whole thing should come out. And if it doesn't, if it separates, no big deal. Just make sure you have both of those pieces when you remove it. And I do recommend keeping all your hardware in a nice organized spot for reinstallation. So it was just one, two, three, and then this fourth plastic push pin in that center one, and that allows us to draw this out. You do kind of have to peel on this. Don't be surprised, it does take a little bit of force here, but this is flexible. Um, so once we're at this point, the next thing we need to do is uh, remove our tow hook. And this just has two factory bolts that are going inside of the frame rail, and that's where our hitch is gonna mount up. So we need to get this out of the way. So I'm gonna grab my socket and we'll remove it. So the socket that we're gonna to use to remove these is gonna be a 17 millimeter, so go ahead and take those down. And our tow hook is not gonna go back up. Um, and if you're worried about being able to, you know, strap something on here, if you ever had to tow, you can use the safety chain loops on your hitch, so not to worry. So once we remove this, you can hold on to it uh, if you'd like, but again, it's not gonna go back on the vehicle. So now at this point, we do need to lower down our muffler as the muffler bracket is going to be bolted up. So to give us a little bit more clearance, uh, we're going to drop this down. It's also going to help get the hitch in place. So the rubber isolator, there's a nice bracket here with a, uh, a flathead screwdriver or a pry bar. Just kind of pry this back using that metal as leverage and it should pop off. You can remove the top or bottom. It really doesn't matter. Um, now, if it is giving you trouble, which over time, sometimes these can kind of build up with corrosion or road grime or anything like that, a soapy water solution helps kind of loosen that up and makes it slide off a little bit easier. So if you need to, you can just take some dish soap and water and kind of put that on the isolator and it should help it along. And this one is kind of tricky here, but there is a bracket that you can kind of pry on this. The main thing that we're trying to do here is get to these bolts. So realistically, with that back one loose, we could just move this out of the way if you can get a socket, and that's gonna drop the whole thing down, making it a little bit easier. Um, so that is an option as well. I'm gonna try that out and see how it works. Now at this point, we're gonna take this portion of the driver's side of the hitch and have your hardware ready. Uh, it's two bolts with a conical tooth washer. You'll see that there's some teeth here on the washer. That's gonna go into the metal on the hitch. So just have those set up in that orientation. And if you have this appearance package or that underbody paneling, we're gonna take this, and this is where it might get tricky. If you're doing this on the ground, it's gonna be kind of hard. Uh, you may have to kind of rotate the hitch to kind of go through there. But uh, you can kind of rest the other side on the muffler. And then what we'll do is take the hardware and we're just gonna get a few threads started here. So just kind of push that up. And once you get one started, that's gonna at least hold the hitch up enough for you to get the other one in place. So it might be helpful to have a jack here or an extra set of hands to kind of get this in place. Now at this point, uh, with one of them started on that side, I'm gonna go ahead and our bracket is going to go back in place. So make sure you have the hitch up towards the frame there. And then we're gonna run our bolt through our bracket and then get one of them started on this side as well. And that's just gonna make it easier having that hitch supported. Now get both bolts hand, uh, at least a couple threads started to where it's holding. And before we get to the other side, we wanna get this underbody panel put back in place. Um, so the main thing is feeding that up by hand, it's kinda tricky, but once it's in place, we'll be able to put a socket up there. So let's get this underbody panel put back in. Now on the passenger side, we do need to get that exhaust bracket put back in place. So uh, when you put your hitch up, kind of align it with those holes and then take your bracket. And this again may be helpful with an extra set of hands or supporting the hitch with, uh, you know, you can use a floor jack, you can use a, whatever you may have handy, some blocks of wood, but that'll help just make this portion a little bit easier. Um, and we're just gonna get one of these hand tightened uh, or at least a couple threads started as well. Now when raising it up on the passenger side, the heat shield does kind of get in the way and it creates kind of a spring effect where it's kind of hard to th thread stuff in. So what I'm gonna do, you don't have to cut this per se, you can if you want with a pair of snips, but if you just take a pair of channel locks or pliers and just kind of take that edge and bend it back 
just to kind of clear that out for the hitch to really align with those holes. It's going to make it a lot easier. So whatever method we have, but as you can tell, I'm just kind of bending this back. That's going to make it, you can see right here, the holes don't really align. So I'm going to bend this back a little bit more until we have that clearance. Now you should have a straight shot to be able to get to the bolts that are up here now that they're hand threaded in. And they're going to be a three quarter inch socket to get these tightened. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to snug them up and you don't have to get crazy here. We're going to come back with a torque wrench to make sure they're torqued down properly. Just go until it's snug on both of these and then we'll head over to the driver's side or on the passenger side where the muffler is and do the same thing. Now with the torque wrench and the same socket, we're going to use the torque setting found in the instruction manual. And this is going to be an important step. It makes sure that the uh, bolts are going to be tight enough for the lifespan of the hitch, but also it's not going to be too tight putting stress on those weld nuts. So go through and use your torque wrench to torque them all down properly. So with everything torqued down properly, we'll go ahead, we'll get our isolator put back on. And then we'll take our plastic push pins and get those put back in that underbody panel. And that was a look at installation of the Draw Tight Class 1 trailer hitch receiver on a 2015 Toyota Prius.